as per this uh, video clip I put on earlier, it's, uh, this person is saying that he understands Einstein's uh, general relativity uh, better than Einstein did. And, and as per that video clip I'm pointing out that that is a revision of relativity. They're understanding relativity a different way than which Einstein understood it. And I've now got another person who's saying that they understand Einstein's general relativity better than Einstein did. So I'll go into that detail now. So what we've got here is uh, David Gross, who's an American particle physicist and string theory theorist, according to Wikipedia. And that was the little clip that I put on the internet. I'll just play it. Which is what I used to explain to graduates of you know, general lines that today we understand general relativity better than I and, and, uh, evolution. Got this other person, uh, Sean Carroll, who's uh, on Wikipedia here, and he's a cosmologist. So he's a cosmologist and he's a physics professor specialising in dark energy and uh, general relativity. So he's also now saying that he understands Einstein's general relativity better than Einstein did. And so I've got him on a recent BBC programme called Inside Einstein's Mind, The Enigma of Space and Time. That's a recent programme celebrating uh, the year 2015 being 100 years since Einstein created general relativity in 1915. So I'll just do the bit of the clip at the beginning and then show you Sean Carroll giving his comment that he understands general relativity better than Einstein. Hey, Hello, right. Will you do it very briefly, yeah, sir? Yeah. Okay. Say when? Albert Einstein. The icon of genius. His theory of general relativity is one of the greatest feats of thinking about nature to come from a single mind. It is now 100 years old. How do you even study the universe? How can you study everything? All of this mass, all the stuff, all the energy in the universe at one time. Turns out that you actually can do that with Einstein's theory of general relativity. So we'll stop it there and I'll go on to the bit in the program where Sean Carroll says he understands general relativity uh, better than Einstein. And this is the bit here. Okay, we we'll play it now. It has a life of its own. We understand general relativity much better right now than Albert Einstein ever did. So you go. He's saying he un that he understands general relativity and they understand general relativity better than Einstein ever did. So we go back to the other one. What's this? We understand general relativity better than Einstein. Yeah, we, they, they believe they understand it better than Einstein and so that is a revision of relativity in the case of Sean Carroll I think I should put it a bit, a bit better in context about what he said before that it was, it was building up to him making that sort of boast and so we build up to where he makes that boast again okay, so that detail in the lab, most of general relativity was then beyond the reach of experiment. 
when Einstein died in 1955, aged 76. The wider scientific community presumed his theory had reached a dead end. But they couldn't have been more mistaken. The best theories in physics always take us to places where the people who invented them didn't imagine. And a truly wonderful theory like general relativity predicts all sorts of things that Einstein didn't conceive of. The theory has a life of its own. We understand general relativity much better right now than Albert Einstein ever did. So there you go, you've got the context of how he was building up to making that claim about we, and hence himself, understands general relativity better than Einstein. And that's a little bit of the program of BBC Inside Einstein's Mind then goes on to talk about things like black holes. So let's go back to uh, uh, what David Gross was saying in the build up to when he was saying we understand uh, general relativity better than Einstein. It starts off from uh, this point. Is that there Two people are on stage and they ask a question about a source chilled solution and, and that bit of mathematics is used in black holes. Okay, so we get to that now. Black holes at all. And so I wanted to ask the two of you to perhaps comment a little bit about this. I mean, the Schwarzschild solution came immediately after the field equations. And of course, it's complicated because in the way that it was written down by Schwarzschild, there's a coordinate singularity to R equals 2m, which we know now is unimportant, but confused matters. And then there's another real singularity to R equals 0. And I'm just curious, what was Einstein's view about this solution and its reality? Because we now consider it very relevant in many ways. In the course of his life, I thought the two of you might be able to comment intelligently about that question. So, um, I think about the... Uh... Um, the singularity at the, at the origin in the, in the Schwarzschild solution, we, we tend to think about that nowadays as the result of a gravitational collapse. But of course, in the, in the Schwarzschild solution itself, it's just a, a point particle source, just as you would use in electro, in, in electromagnetism, right? Where it's a point charge. So there was no, no view there in the original Schwarzschild solution that this singularity was anything else than an idealization of matter. And only later with studies of gravitational collapse and the idea that this singularity somehow arose in a dynamical manner did one even start to think about what it meant physically beyond the even idealization of, of a, a matter particle. So I think that that's why it's not really an issue if you look at it at a short shift or a reaction. But of course, we know that uh, the singularity, the coordinate singularity at the horizon in Schwarzschild coordinates bothered many people until Kruskal and so on, which is about uh, 30 some years later. Uh, and Einstein, as far as I can tell, that's what never understood exactly. I mean, it was confused off, over and over again by coordinate singularity. And you know this is most explicit in his attempt in it. In, you know. And the interesting thing about black holes is uh, Einstein didn't really believe in black holes. And now people like David Gross and uh, Sean Carroll and others like him are claiming belief in black holes. And so they've changed what is really Einstein's theory because Einstein didn't interpret his theory as having black holes. But now they've done the revision, they've decided that they're going to believe in black holes from general relativity. They revised it and I don't know if you really paid attention if we go back here, picture here of him, and he was explaining it that in the context of Einstein's day, you were dealing with point particles 
and you were dealing with an idealisation and you didn't really go into enough details but that idealisation was being dealt with from Newtonian physics. So from Einstein's point of view working from what is essentially a Newtonian point particle being treated as an idealisation you didn't get a collapse to a point to a singularity of infinite density and so I repeat that in Newtonian physics you have what is a point particle idealisation and it is not a singularity of infinite density and more details of this are dealt with in Boscovich's theory so what you have here is a revision from how Einstein was dealing with points as from uh, Newtonian physics and how they want to now deal with it in this case of singularities and it is a revision to the physics once again and it's actually messing up what was a unification in physics from Boscovich so they're getting more and more into a mess with their revisions and so that is the major revision that they're doing they're going on about how wonderful Einstein is and they've revised the theory these people they've revised the theory they've suddenly decided they're going to believe in things they call singularities and so when we go to things like that they are going wrong because Boscovich's theory is a unified field theory and so they're just going wrong 18th century there was a unified field theory based upon Newtonian point particles and now suddenly these people who think they know better than Einstein are messing up what they understand as point particles Before I start to speak about Boscovich, I will tell you a few words about... So there you go. You can see the rest of the video. It's on the internet. Modern physics is going wrong in a big way. Thank you.